Well, here we are, my dear. I expected Ben Cartwright to meet us. It's really rather strange, isn't it? Hey, we can't just stand out in the street like this. Of course not. I'll get someone to bring the baggage. Would you bring up the baggage, please? By the supplies I told you to? Still anywhere, I'll skin you alive, you hear? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I thought there were ten. Oh, yes, I knew I was right. You know, you're quite right about Mr. Cartwright. He really should have been here to meet us, Marion. Marion? Is that your name? Yes. Why do you ask? <laughs> it's a woman's name, ain't it? I'm afraid you've made a slight mistake. You see, there's a difference in the spelling. Oh, there is, huh? Yes, spelled properly. It's been a man's name for 500 years. In England, that is. Well, that's very nice. This ain't England. Oh, why don't we drop it, old chap? There's no reason for a scene. We're not bothering you. Bothering? Have you any idea what would happen to you if you have even tried to bother me? He's really very offensive. Please get rid of him, Marion. And how's he gonna do that, huh? Or do you have any ideas on that subject? Mariam. You trying to hit me in the face? I'll get you for this, Cartwright. Maybe, Belgium. But this isn't your day. I'm sorry that had to happen. It took me by surprise. I had no idea. Well, don't judge all of us out here by that one. Lord Dunsford, I'm Adam Cartwright. Adam Cartwright? One of Ben's sons? My father couldn't make it. He's waiting for us at the ranch. Sorry I was late. May I present my wife, Lady Beatrice? How do you do? How do you do? I can't tell you how much we've both been looking forward to this trip to America. I have a carriage outside. We'd better get started. The boys will bring us stuff later. to you, ma'am, for a most memorable evening. We won't soon forget it. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. And I'm sure that Marion and I will never forget your wonderful hospitality. Yes, and we're delighted we were finally able to visit you. Well, so were we. <laughs> Though I told Beatrice about that time we spent together years ago in Louisiana. <laughs> ben, remember that Cajun fellow? Um, Trapper, wasn't he? Etienne. Had the longest trap line in the territory. Of course, it belonged to six other men. <laughs> <laughs> He'd come roaring into town twice a year, tear the place apart. <laughs> Is that where you first met Pa? Yes, my first trip to America. Always like to hear Paul get wound up. He don't do it often. Most men love to reminisce. I suppose it's part of being a man. Or a woman. <laughs> I'm sorry to break this up. Boss and I have some cows we have to bring down early in the morning. Yes, you do. If you'll excuse us. Why, of course. I hope your stay will be a long one. Thank you, Little Joe. I agree with Little Joe, ma'am. It ain't often we get an opportunity to have a filly like you visit us. Filly? Now, that's Hoss's greatest compliment. <sighs> Night, ma'am. Good night. Good night. I uh, get to see the New York papers now and again, Dunsford. I was reading about your last African hunt. I wish I could have been honored with you. I'd be interested in uh, seeing some of your guns. I hope you brought them along. As a matter of fact, I did. But I don't intend to do any hunting. Well, we don't have any tigers or elephants out this way, but I think we could rustle up some game worthy of our guests. Don't you think so, Adam? Well, we might find a pretty good mountain lion or two. Mountain lion? I wonder, are they as interesting as tiger? I really don't intend to do any hunting on this trip. Oh, why not, Marion? These American lions might prove to be very exciting. And after all, you are supposed to be the finest shot in all England. If you men are going to reminisce about your hunting exploits, I'm going to get a breath of air. Will you join me, Adam? If you like.
Well, Dunsford, you uh, really shouldn't look down on our American cougar. They're awfully good hunting. Well, I don't know very much about your American lion, or cougar, as you call them. Oh, dangerous, mighty dangerous if they're wounded and cornered. Another brandy? Uh, yes, thanks. The stars are bright tonight. Are they so different from what you're accustomed to seeing in England? No. I suppose I just imagine they're a little brighter. Why, I think in a strange place, everything seems kind of new. My husband and I have traveled all over the world. We've seen many strange places and many strange people. And nothing is ever new or entirely different. Oh, no, I can't go along with that, ma'am. Ma'am, don't call me that. Makes me feel old. Call me Beatrice. All right. I'll admit I like that much better. But I can't agree with your premise that nothing changes. Can't you? My husband never does. Well, perhaps he shouldn't. From what my father says, he's very fond of him. Your father isn't married to my husband. I am. Look what happened this morning. My husband is always the perfect gentleman. He allows even a ruffian like that to take advantage of him. Oh, you mean that little set to with Belcher? Well, we don't know what might have happened. I just jumped in before the dust settled, that's all. I know my husband. But it's a strange town. Your husband wasn't even carrying a gun. He wouldn't have used it. How do you know? Oh, don't let's talk about it. It's much, much too beautiful a night. You know, I think I'm going to like America more than I thought I would. Thank you for being so kind to me this morning. Uh, I've just about convinced Lord Dunsford that he uh, do some shooting while he's our guest. Nice chap, Ben Cartwright. How do you like him? Yes, he is rather nice. Quite charming, in fact. Quite a place. Spread, I think they call it out here. Well, it's large enough. Fine family, fine boys. We're really rather back where we were, aren't we, Marion? Did you have to start that business about the hunting and, and what a good shot I am? Well, you are, aren't you? We're guests here, and Ben's an old friend. I hope I don't have to remind you to behave properly. I always behave properly, exactly properly. Then how do you describe the way you threw yourself at young Cartwright out there? If I did throw myself at him, as you say I did, why didn't you do something about it? Belgian made, isn't it? That's right. Had it made specially for big cats, tigers and such. Well, if we have luck, some of these mountain lions around here can run pretty big. How many beaters do you think we'll need? Beaters? Oh, this isn't Africa. We don't use them. Just you and me and a camp wrangler. It's not a matter of how many men we take along, but how few. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, if we're to get within seeing distance of a cougar, we'll have to travel quiet, light, and fast. Once you get the knack of it, I think you'll enjoy it. Yes, I'm sure I will. As far as the eye can see, even farther. <laughs> it's fast. It's beautiful. Oh, I hope we're not interrupting you. It's a pleasure. How are you doing, my dear? Oh, the guns came through in excellent shape. You sure have some beautiful weapons here. I think I mentioned to you before that my modest husband is considered one of the finest hunters of his time. Oh, you, you flatter me, my dear. Hardly, when all England says as much. We got in a little target practice this morning. Oh? Is he as good a shot as I said he is? Sure is. I'm glad I wasn't betting against him. <laughs> <laughs> have you decided where you're going hunting? Well, some of the boys found some fresh signs up near Papoose Peak. I think we'll try up there. Papoose Peak? That's rather a quaint name. Where is it? Uh, two days north of here. We'll camp one night on the way up. When do you plan to leave? Tomorrow morning, as soon as it's light enough. Got everything? Yep. Adam, I can't see myself calling him Lord, Lord Dunsford. 
Clean sacrilegious, I clean. Well, that's not the way it's meant. Call him anything you like. Well, seems to me if just plain Mr. Cartwright's good enough for your pa, then plain Mr. Dunsford ought to be good enough for him. I got a better idea. Don't call him anything. Just uh, say, hey, you. Well, now, Adam, that, that, that don't sound polite, seeing as he's a guest and all that. I'll do some more thinking on it. I'll see if his lordship is ready. Ah, good morning. Good morning, Adam. You're up early. I feel positively uncivilized getting up at this hour. <laughs> it's practically the middle of the day for us. That's quite a nice outfit you're wearing. We don't usually see anything like that on the Ponderosa. Quite the courtier, aren't you? Well, you're quite a lady, Lady Dunsford. Lady Dunsford. I thought I told you my name was Beatrice. Yes, so you did. Why, only three horses, Anne. Well, there are only three of us going. Your husband, Whitey, and myself. But I'm coming with you. <laughs> this is no trip for a woman. Oh, but why not? I always accompany my husband on the hunt. Besides, I've been in much more dangerous and much more wilder places than this. You can ask him. I will. Marion, I've just been telling Adam that I'd planned to come on the hunt with you. Is that the way you figured it, Dunsford? Well, uh, I hadn't given it much thought one way or another. I planned it that way. If you've made up your mind, my dear, uh, she's used to this sort of thing. Well, she's your wife. Saddle up another horse, Whitey. Howdy. Howdy. I was, uh, just riding by. Well, this place ain't hardly built on a highway. I can't see that it is, but... I can't say I know where it is. You a stranger? Lost? I guess you could say that. I'm uh, out of tobacco. Could you sell me a mite? Ain't got none to sell. I can let you have a little to tide you over till you get in town. Well, that's real neighborly. I appreciate it. Tell him you might as well see what the old fool's got inside. Don't hold out anything on me. I'll start looking for signs. You tired? Mm -hmm. I admit I am. Oh, I know I was warned. Which is Papoose Peak? That one over there. Huh. Rather ghostly, isn't it? I think I'll give Whitey a hand. Toss me one of those cones, will you? Ever shot an elephant, Adam? No. Or a lion? Oh, African lion. Or a crocodile? No, uh, there aren't too many in this neck of the woods. But you have faced a grizzly or a cougar. I'm sure I have. Why do you ask? Just wondering. Wondering? About what? How you'd be against an elephant. How did Marion do? Very well. 
He always does very well. You got me straight, Captain. Looks like old Adam's got his scooter yet. Killed my cabin's grandson. What's wrong with him, Paul? I don't know. Looks worn out. Oh, let's get some water. You all right, boy? Can you hear me? Grandpa's dead. Engines. Oh, there ain't no Indians on the warpath around here. Not regular ones. You mean Belcher and his renegades? Yeah. Adam saw Belcher picking up supplies in Virginia City the day before yesterday. Oh, if he, if he went up by Cavanaugh's, that means he swung up north. There's a half a dozen isolated settlers up there, Paul. Adam and Dunsford and his wife, too. You don't think you'd try to tackle him, do you? If he's in a killing mood, there's no telling what that renegade might try. Oh, it's you and little Joe. You better ride up there in a hurry, see how everything is, just to make sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll take care of the boy. top of the bluff. Want to try and treat him? No, I'd like our guest to get a running shot at him. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, I'll get behind him. As soon as he spots me, he'll run. From the lay of the land, 10 to 1, he'll run right straight towards you. You found him, Adam. I think you'd like a shot at him. Now, he's all yours. He shouldn't be any trouble, Marion. He's only a big cat. Yes, ma'am, but he may be plenty big. Where do you see him up close? Look, lady, you better get yourself back here. Now, you look here, uh, Lord. That cat's gonna be running blind scared. You get him before he runs over you. Because them there cats, they don't give you two chances. Get a shot at him. He'll never get a better chance. I suppose you're wondering what happened. Oh, let's forget about it, Marion. I sometimes talking about a thing uh, helps. I really should explain. Somehow I just can't force myself to pull the trigger, to, to fire. Then, when the beast gets close. My lord insists upon trying, always trying. Well, every man's entitled to a mistake. But it's happened before, in Africa and in India. It's happened before. Now do you understand? I think we'd better get some sleep. I'd like to talk with you, Adam, if you don't mind. What I'm going to say is going to be difficult for a man like yourself to understand. 
Look, Dunsford, I've seen other men freeze on the trigger, even when facing a deer. But I'm not talking about other men. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about what happened today. Well, look, why don't we just say it was a bad day? Don't you realize that it's much more than that? Adam, do you believe it's just a matter of courage? Dunsford, why go into it? Comes a day in every man's life when he has to evaluate that word. Makes no difference whether he be soldier or sportsman. Are you saying it's a matter of degree? No, it isn't. Reckless courage is the privilege of youth. As a man grows older, he stops to ask himself which is more important, himself or the tiger. And why do you go on? Unfortunately, Adam, I'm in love with my wife. And she's still in love with the image of the man that she married. That man passed out of existence five years ago. should be over there with your husband. I watched you dispatch that cougar. It was beautiful what you did. You call that kind of killing beautiful? You talk too much for a man of action. You're, um, wasting your time, Lady Dunsford. Am I? Do you rather I wasted it with my husband? Your husband's a friend of my father's. That means he's my friend, too. <laughs> you are an honorable man. There are worse things to be. You're trying very hard to hurt your husband, to get even with him. Why? Can you blame me? Yes, and in more ways than one. You insisted on coming along on this hunt. You knew what was going to happen. If you had any feeling for the man, you'd have stayed behind. You're trying to force him to break, to make him disgrace himself. Now, why? He's a card. He's shot through and through with fear. And you, you uh, don't know the meaning of fear? I refuse to accept that I'm married to a card. Is it that? Or is it just the need to keep the image alive of what he once was? Or what you thought he was? You're quite a backwards philosopher, aren't you, Adam? for the bandage. All right, up ahead. Keep riding, keep separated.
hungry, eat. Time you brought me some food. Don't like. I want my food properly cooked. And I want some salt on it. Rather an unusual fellow, isn't he? It was a renegade. Thieving scavenger to steal anything that isn't tied down. Don't suppose we have much chance against them. Belch and these Indians of his are always just one step short of the noose, and a couple of more killings isn't going to make any difference. If we could only get our hands on some guns. What guns? Belch has got mine, he's got yours too. Got him cashed over in that cave. Doesn't even trust these Indians of his. Pretty confident of himself, isn't he? Why shouldn't he be? What's he got to worry about? Hey, you with the red hair. Are you addressing me? Ain't nobody else around here fits that description. You know how to cook? Not very well, I'm afraid. Well, now, don't let that worry you, because you're going to get a chance to improve right now. Being as how you're a civilized woman, and I got me an educated taste. Get over here and you cook something for me. Come on, now, get moving. Come on, now, get up. Try this, Mr. Belcher. Just a little rare with a pinch of salt. Better? What? No complaints? Don't get sassy with me! <gasps> Yeah, this must have happened last night. They didn't build this fire up for breakfast. Maybe Adam and the others got away. Either that or Belcher took him with him. If he'd have killed him, he would have left him here the way he did with old Kavanaugh and Whitey here. Why would he want to take him with him? I don't know. How do you figure a man like Belcher? Let's have a look around, see what we can find. Hey, Joe, come here. It's Indian ponies, I make it. Adam left his pony picking it over here, you see? Looks like they rode out in this direction. Yeah, they took Adam's horses with them, all right. Yeah. From the looks of those tracks, all the horses were ridden. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Adam and the Dunsford are still alive after all, huh? Uh, they were when they left here. Let's bury Whitey and go after him. Yeah, we'll do that, little brother. Had you working all day as though you were his slave. Kill. He has his own idea about how he should treat women. Perhaps you could try keeping out of his way. Don't do anything to attract his attention. You think I don't have his attention already? Mind if I join the party? What are you planning on doing with us? Well, now, I, I could kill you all and be rid of you, but I figured I found me a little gold mine. The only thing I ain't too sure yet about the best way to mine it. Forget it. 
My father and my brothers are probably on the trail right now. I catch up with you, Belcher, they'll blast you sky high. But if they ever get too close to me, you might find that you're just a piece of crow meat. And I mean all of you. Well, now, I don't know about us, but I know how you're going to end up. High in a vulture on a sunny day. Oh. <laughs> you know, only my better nature keeps me from letting him kill you. You would hit a man with a bad arm, wouldn't you? You're a filthy pig. Ah, and now we hear from the grand lady. Now listen, pig or no pig, this is my camp. And while you're here, you'll do as I tell you, or I just might kill you. I'm not afraid of you, Belcher. You're not, huh? <laughs> well, now, there's a nice little polecat. You know, if there's anything I like, it's a woman with spunk. Take your hands off me. Well, sure. There's no harm done, is there? You and me are going to get along fine. Will we? Yeah. We understand each other. We know the difference between having guts and not having guts. Tell me, how'd you happen to marry something like him, hmm? <laughs> Anyway, the reason I came over was to invite you to a little tea party I'm holding. Beatrice, you're not going with him. How would you decline his invitation? <laughs> Sit down. Woman! You call? Give me the jug. Have a drink. I don't think I should like it. I didn't ask you to like it. I just said drink it. <laughs> don't worry, you'll get to like it. Tell me something. You you got another name, haven't you? Hmm? Beatrice. Beatrice. I'm not so sure that I like it. See, I once knew a girl in St. Louis by that name. Well, I can't say that she could hold a candle to you. <laughs> You've had your eye on old Solomon for a long time now, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you and me are going to be great pals, you know that. Let's have another drink. Isn't there any way to reason with a man like that? Well, you heard what he said about finding himself a gold mine. All he has to do now is figure out a way to make it pay off. Then you think it's money he's after? That's one of the things that's on his mind. Well, how much do you think Belcher would want? Well, it depends upon how much he thinks your wife is worth. I guess I'll talk to him now. Do you think this is a good time? Belch is a typical bully boy. He's probably feeling pretty good since he's shown who's boss. What is this, a social visit? 
Hardly. This uh, gold mine, you uh, figured a way to work it yet? You got a way? Maybe I have. My uh, friend Dunsford here is willing to give you $10,000 if you will uh, let him and his wife go free. Well, he doesn't have it in his jeans. I already searched them. Oh, you'll get the money. I'll guarantee it. How can you possibly guarantee it? Turn him loose. Let him go back to the Ponderosa. My father will send the money, and I'll remain here as your hostage. Adam Cartwright, the man with all the answers. Adam, you never said anything about a hostage. You figuring to use me as coyote bait? I'm not hankering to have Ben Cartwright and his boys track after me. I'll have to think about this. Well, now, you can't very well turn it down. Well, I don't say that because I can do just that. I can kill you and Marion there eh? anytime I feel like it. Forget the whole business. What about my wife? Talking about this poor little kitten here. Hmm? Now, old Solomon might just consider taking her on as his squaw. <laughs> Treat her pretty good, too. You don't really think you can get away with it? Why not? What's the difference? Me and the Indian steal a horse, it's my horse. Steal a gun, it's my gun. Well, if I steal a woman, she's my woman. I've done it before. Huh? Well, that's a very realistic way of looking at things. Realistic nothing is a way of a thief. What business is it of yours, Mr. Cartwright? But it is my business. You're my wife. And you'll stay my wife as long as I'm alive. Want to prove that, Mr. Husband? About being alive? You want to fight me for this knife? Whoever gets that knife uses it. He gets to keep the woman. Here. Yeah. They backtracked and brushed him out. That's what they've done. Yeah, we must be near Belcher's camp for him to do that. Yeah. I think we better leave the horses here. Oh, it's you. You startled me. You, uh, enjoy a little party last night? Yes, thank you. Very much. Your husband and I felt sort of left out. Oh, I was sorry Mr. Belcher wasn't in the mood for more guests. Well, now, I think being a guest of Mr. Belcher is something I can do without. Look, it's easy to criticize a man who is so completely different to yourself. Belcher's no glamorous, romantic highwayman. I didn't say he was. I know he's crude and he's rude, but he did make you a fair offer last night, and I didn't notice either you or Marion rushing to take it up. The knife is still where he left it, by the cave. That fascinates you, doesn't it? What do you want me to do? I'm worried about your husband. He may try to fight Belcher. Marion? There's little danger of that. Well, there is unless you tell him not to. He doesn't love me. That isn't true. He loves you very much. Then why doesn't he fight for me? Well, you'd like to see him dead, is that it? He doesn't stand a chance against Belcher. That's a chance he wouldn't take. Fear. It's always fear. He had his chance against the cougar. Why did he have to freeze like that? He could have killed it without any effort at all. How do you know how much effort it takes for him to kill? I don't know. I just want him to do it. And Belcher's the kind of man you deserve. Well, whatever else he'd do, he wouldn't walk away from a fight. All right, suppose Marion were to fight and got killed. How would you feel then? How do you think I feel now? I don't hate Marion, but well, he's just not the man I married. I want him to be a man for his own sake, as well as for mine. Belcher sure knows how to cover up his tracks. Yeah, he learned it from them Indians he runs with. 
Joe, you remember that time me and you and Paul were up here hunting and found that cave? That was, uh, so that next ridge in the canyon. Yeah. You don't reckon Belcher can be holed up in there, do you? Yeah, it's worth a look. Why are you sitting there like that doing nothing? Come on, gather some wood. Well, come on, you heard me, come on. I expect you to be looking me up this morning about that knife. Well, maybe you didn't think it was a fair offer. What about my offer to you? Oh, you mean that money? You know what amount was that? $10,000. Is that all she's worth to you, huh? Fine-looking woman like that. That's more money than you've ever seen in your life. Yes, that's true, but... Well, I think she's worth a little more than that. Are you trying to bargain with me, Belcher? Why oh, wouldn't bargain with a fine learning this gentleman? That's good. Then shall we call it an agreement? No, not just yet. Well, you see, it's not that I don't take the word of a fine English gentleman, but you understand the business deal a man has to protect himself. Well, now, if, if I left Adam Cartwright here as a hostage, well, that'd be no protection for me. All I had to do is bring the Ponderosa Riders down on my neck. Well, that's your problem, old man. Well, no, I think it's yours, too. How is it mine? Well, now, instead of leaving Adam here as a hostage, I'll send him home. Keep your wife. You must know I'd never leave my wife here with you. <laughs> well, I understand. You know, because, well, speaking personal, I find it hard to live without a woman. Well, so now that I have Beatrice, well, that makes two. I can't use them both. So I figured since I'm getting your woman, well, I'd just give you one of mine. That old squaw, Toma. Now, that's fair, ain't it? You don't really expect me to answer that, do you? Sure. Look, if you don't take her, I'm just gonna have to take her out back of that rock and bash her brains in. Why all the sentimentality? Huh? Oh. Well, you know, Toma, she's a little jealous. And if I move that new white squaw in tonight, it could get touchy. I'm giving you a reasonable deal now. Been fed everybody. When you think about it. Adam, what... What shall I do about Beatrice? Well, what do you want to do? Do you think I should fight Belcher? I don't think you have a chance in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. He's bigger, heavier. He's been raised on brawls and barroom fights. What do you suggest? Yeah. I might try him. And it's up to me, isn't it? Well, man can only do what he can. What he can. I suppose that's the whole point, isn't it? What do you mean? I don't know if you'd understand. It's not death or dying that I'm afraid of. Well, what is it? If I could only be sure that at the last moment I wouldn't freeze or, or run. made a bargain with your husband. What kind of a bargain? I traded you for Tomar. You're gonna stay here with me. He's gonna go safely home with Mother Squaw. Sounds good, doesn't it? I like my women to fight a little, but only a little. When you're my woman, you learn one thing. You do what I tell you or I'll kill you. Ah! Belcher, stop it! Well, Marion, I didn't know you had it in you. Let go!
cross me, I'd cut your throat. Ah! Just keep down. All right, hold it. Drop it. You're right, Adam. Well, we are now. So you took care of Belcher. We figured you would. I had a little help. Uh, we made quite a team, didn't we, Marion? We really did. We certainly did, Adam. You needn't risk the Marion's much better this morning. He's going to be all right. Well, I'm very pleased to hear that. Thank you, Adam. I'll take the soup. Come on in. He'll be glad to see you. Marion, you have a visitor. Adam. How about <laughs> doing some hunting? I could rustle up something. You know, Adam, I think I've had my fill of hunting. <laughs> we both have. Besides, now I know that the man is more important than the tiger. When did you learn that? That night at the camp. When you felt that knife at your throat, then you, too, really knew the meaning of fear. Yes. And a peaceful man, a truly peaceful man, is willing to die for what he loves. You know something, Lady Dunsford. And don't you ever forget it. Mm -hmm. 